Or the Baltimore police officers involved with Freddie Gray's arrest are facing serious charges. But the family of Eric Garner, the New York man who died after being put in a police chokehold, say they never got justice. CNN's Sarah Gannon compares the two cases. The arrest of six Baltimore police officers and Freddie Gray's death has renewed calls for justice for Eric Garner. 43-year-old father who died after being placed in an apparent chokehold by an NYPD officer last year. Garner repeated the phrase 11 times during his arrest. Now we learned the 25-year-old Gray also indicated to police officers that he too could not breathe. Esau Garner spoke about the similarities between her husband's last moments and Gray's. The same way the man was screaming for medical attention and they refused to get it or delayed getting it was the same way that my husband was screaming, I can't breathe, and they did not let the EMS workers do what they needed to do for my husband to survive that incident. The grand jury's decision not to indict the officers involved sparked huge demonstrations in New York and reignited a national conversation on police brutality that continues. In both cases, paramedics were called too late, but law enforcement analyst and former FBI Assistant Director Tom Fuentes says it's hard to criticize officers for not immediately calling for help. Well, the problem is, and, and having made many, many arrests when I was a street cop myself before joining the FBI, is that that's kind of common that you hear people uh, being arrested that are resisting in any way say they can't breathe, or they can't walk, or, you know, claiming ailments that they don't really have. In Garner's case, the Department of Justice is currently investigating civil rights violations. His family called for justice in a press conference on Saturday. People in Baltimore, South Carolina, they're prosecutors, they did the right thing. And that's what we need. We need someone to step up and do the right thing. It's been 10 months, and there has been nothing done to these police officers in regards to Eric Garner. And I'm happy for the other families that they're getting justice, but we need justice here in New York for Eric Garner. But the difference between the two cases make it hard to draw comparisons. Well, in the Garner case, Garner's resisting a lawful arrest. If he would have complied, he'd still be alive today, and bad things wouldn't have happened from the wrestling match that they ended up having on the sidewalk. In the Gray case, it turns out that even the arrest itself was completely unlawful, and then everything bad happens to him afterward, but he shouldn't have even been in police custody for anything else bad to happen. Regardless of the outcome of Garner's case, protesters here believe his death added to the national conversation of police brutality, even though justice for Freddie Gray may not mean justice for Eric Garner. Sarah Ganim, CNN, New York. All right, let's talk more about these comparisons. Legal analysts Joey Jackson and Danny Zavallos are with me here. So in your eyes, Joey, you first. Are there parallels? Why charges in one case and not the other? You know, there certainly are parallels. Why? Because, A, you see a group of officers who are pursuing, in Eric Gardner's case, him, and he ends up dead. And in this case, the Freddie Gay Gray case, people, officers pursue him. He's dead. You have both asking for medical assistance, not provided, and both are dead. I think that, the, you know, there's a difference in political environments. Remember, I'm from New York. Uh, Eric Gardner occurred in Staten Island. It was presented to a Staten Island grand jury, uh, and they opted not to indict. Obviously, the federal government, there's certainly remedies there. So there's no option similar to this city, where the state's attorney can make recommendations for charges, then a grand jury can indict. You're saying in New York, it's straight to a grand jury. So there is no there, intermediary. There are complexities, Frederica, but the reality is, is that the local district attorney, in this case the Staten Island district attorney, made the decision to present the case to the grand jury, which is how we do things in New York, and the manner in which a, a, a prosecutor presents a case has a lot to do with it. I say that as a former prosecutor who has presented cases to the grand jury, and as a defense attorney who has been in the grand jury for various cases, but unfortunately, um, for whatever reasons, uh, which outraged the community in New York and across the country, he was and indicted, and now you're looking at potentially a federal remedy for the federal government to step in and say, you know what, this was a willful, which is the standard, deprivation of his civil right. Will they do that? That remains to be seen. Danny. This